Hello everyone, welcome back to another vlog. I'm vlogging this weekend because I am taking on a really interesting running challenge. <laughs> and it's going to be a challenge and I thought I would vlog it so I can document the journey. Um, but I am taking on the Yeti Ultra 24 hour challenge. For those of you who do not know what that is, um, this is something that the Yeti trail runners came up with at the beginning of COVID um, as like a virtual kind of race or running activity, running challenge, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the idea is that you have 24 hours to complete an ultra marathon. And the way you do that is you run about five miles every four hours for 24 hours. Um, and theoretically you will get up to a 50 K, which is 31 miles in distance. So obviously I'll have to run a little bit more than five miles for a good chunk of these runs to get up to that 31 mile mark. But I am taking on this challenge tomorrow and I'm going to be vlogging my experience. Right now I'm just getting some dinner ready. It's a little, it's like 5.20 p.m. Um, so it's a little bit early for dinner, but I'm just getting it ready so we can eat it and I can just settle down and get to bed early because my first run is going to be at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. So I have to get up at three so I can get ready, eat to get out the door. So I'm gonna eat some dinner. I'll show you what I'm eating. I'm also gonna show you like how I'm fueling and how I feel. This is all very new to me, so I really kind of don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of do what feels right for me. Um, I've done a little bit of research and gotten some advice from other people who have completed this challenge. Um, so hopefully everything runs smoothly tomorrow, but we're just going to have to find out. <laughs> um, so I'll show you what I'm eating for dinner once it's all cooked. Um, and I'll be talking to you guys throughout the next 24 plus hours. Exciting stuff. All right, here's my pre-Yeti dinner. So I have some butternut squash with vodka sauce, um, some broccoli and some chicken sausage. Be drinking some water. Hopefully that's good fuel for tomorrow. Um, so I'm gonna eat this. I think I'm gonna shower, get myself nice and relaxed in this uncomfy clothes, got my work clothes. Um, and then just try to chill for the rest of the night. I'll actually also show you like how I've set up all of my gear um, so that I'm prepared for tomorrow as well. But first let's eat some food, get myself fueled for six runs tomorrow. All right, I'm showered, ate my dinner, did the dishes. It's like 7.20ish right now um and i'm gonna get in bed i'm definitely not falling asleep right now because it's too early but hopefully i can start making myself a little bit sleepy so i can fall asleep at a pretty reasonable hour because i do have an alarm set for 3 a.m first run is at four um so i want to make sure i'm getting as much rest and sleep as possible before the big day um but i wanted to show you how i've kind of organized myself before uh, heading out tomorrow morning. So this laundry basket is all of my clothes for tomorrow. I have six different outfits for the six different runs because I don't want to stay in my wet sweaty clothes between runs. So I have six different outfits and I've uh, ordered them on the pile based on what order I'm going to need them. <laughs> so my first outfit's right here at the top. Um, and then we'll go all the way down. Um, I also have my headlamp here, and then I have my light vest, which is actually downstairs because I just took Snowy on a nighttime walk. But I'll have my light vest for my uh, nighttime run slash no sun runs, which will be about three of them. So over here, I have all the shoes that I will be wearing, not these ones, uh, but these three, I'm going to kind of cycle through them. Um, so I'm not wearing the same shoes two times in a row. Um, just in case they get wet. Um, it's also good to kind of like let your shoes breathe because the padding will kind of get tamped down um, when you run. So I'll do two cycles through these shoes. So I have my Nikes here and then I have my Brooks Ghosts, which I've been using quite a bit, and then my uh, Brooks Adrenalines. I don't really wear these anymore, but I, I figured like two runs in those tomorrow will be fine. I haven't prepped any fuel for tomorrow in terms of like gels or anything like that because 
the runs will be so short that I'll actually, by the time I like need anything, I'll be back home. I did go grocery shopping today, so I have food at the ready for when I get back. I have read a recommendation that when you're doing this challenge to eat as soon as you get back from your runs. Um, so not to wait too long before you eat. So that will be my game plan while I run. I'll like think of what I want <laughs> to eat and then I'll eat as soon as I get back before I do my stretch, roll out, shower, rest. I'll eat first, that will be the plan. Um, but yeah, so I am about to get into bed um, and for my nighttime activity, I figured I would pick up um, one of my current reads um, and that is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. Um, I am a little over halfway done. I'm not actually loving this book. I'm not hating it, but I'm like, I'm waiting for excitement to happen. It's a lot of exposition, so we'll see if this picks up pace at all. But I'm not super loving it, but I want to try to get through it. Hopefully I can finish it this weekend. Um, I'd like to get this book done. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the evening before I fall asleep. And uh, I will check in with you guys when I wake up. And I'm probably going to look very sleepy because it will be very early in the morning. Um, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. It is 3.45 and I'm just about ready to head out. I'm not going to start until four o'clock, but um, I'm awake. I'm dressed. Um, it's pretty chilly out this morning. I guess it's going to be really windy today, which, you know, only makes running easier. <laughs> but I'm going to get started on my first leg here in about 15 minutes. Um, I did eat a little snack. I had one of my um, apple cinnamon rice cakes with peanut butter to start. And then when I get back, I'll eat something a little bit more substantial. Because it's still dark out, I'm going to be wearing a headlamp and my light vest. Um, and I'm going to be staying close to home. Um, we have a lot of sidewalks around here so I can easily make, you know, a few, a few one mile laps or half mile laps. So I'm closer to the house to stay a little bit more safe. Um, and I'm not gonna wear my headphones if I wanna listen to something, I'll just listen to it on my phone. So I'm a little bit more alert. Um, just trying to take all the steps that I can to stay safe. But yeah, almost getting started. I'll check in with you guys once I'm ready to go. Um, probably won't be vlogging on this leg of the run just cause it's gonna be dark out. <laughs> You probably won't be able to see me, but I will definitely be checking in and keeping you guys updated. Okay, so it's officially 4 a.m. I'm about to head out on my first 5.2 mile run, um, and I will check in with you guys when I'm done. 5.21 and 52.43, 10.07 pace. It is so windy and blustery outside. <laughs> there was a point on one of my last loops where a gust came through while I was like mid stride and it kind of like kicked my feet out from under me a little bit. I was able to not fall, but it was so weird. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, my feet have never been blown out from under me by the wind before. Um, <laughs> but first leg complete, um, I'm going to add it to the board. Um, and then I'm going to eat something, drink something, get out of my sweaty clothes, maybe like rinse off with a shower real quick to warm up. I don't want to get cold. Um, and then get off my feet, um, and do some, you know, take the stick and rub, rub down my legs and stretch and things like that. So that's the plan. Let's, uh, get some food in us. Here is my breakfast. I got a coffee, my water, two blueberry Kodiak pancakes. If you don't know about Kodiak, they do have like protein in them. Um, they do like waffles and pancakes, but I wanted the waffle, got some syrup, and I have an orange and a banana and my board for inspiration. <laughs> All right, so it's 7.53. Um, spent a lot of my downtime, just chilling, watching uh, some reruns of Scrubs on Hulu. 
um, and just relaxing. I did take like a little like 15, 20 minute nap, which was great. Got some food in me, got some stretching in, warmed up, um, and now I'm getting ready to go out on run number two. I'm rocking the Bib Rave Orange for run number two, and I'm going to have a running buddy who is very impatiently waiting <laughs> for me to get the show on the road. Um, so she'll be running with me for this run. Um, I might take her out on another run later on. I don't want to totally, you know, exhaust her. Um, but she loves running with me, so <laughs> this will be a fun five miler. I'll have a partner with me and the sun's out, which will be nice. Um, hopefully it's a little less windy, a little warmer, and uh, have an enjoyable run number two. I'm also going to bring my GoPro, so we'll get some running footage. weather it's still cold but it's not nearly as windy sun's out felt really good only complaint is that my ankles are really really tight so I'm gonna work on rolling those out after I eat and get out of my running clothes because um, it's too early to be in pain <laughs> I'm only two runs in got four more to go um but felt good it was a good run besides my ankles felt good was jamming out to some tunes had a good time how was that for you was that fun yeah you did so good you did so good yeah good girl <laughs> let's get you some breakfast <laughs> My fuel for this interval is smoothie. I have spinach, raspberries, banana, and yogurt and peanut butter in here. I might have something else too. Um, maybe a little closer to my next run, but we'll see. Hello. It is five minutes to noon, so I'm just about to get ready to head out the door. I have my layers on and uh, run number three see how it goes. I'm feeling real tired. Um, so I think when I get home, probably try to grab a couple minutes of sleep. We'll see. And Brett has volunteered to make me food for when I get back, which is going to be awesome. Five more miles, 5.2 more miles, I should say, on the docket. And hopefully it will like wake me up a little bit too. Millie snuck her way in to running with me. I'm only going to bring her for a mile or so for this run. She's been sleeping since we got home from the last run, or she ran the whole thing with me. <laughs> so she's already pretty tired, so I'm not going to push her that hard on this one. But we're at the door for leg number three. And it's so gorgeous out right now. May have overdressed a little bit, so it's a good thing that I'm dropping her off. <laughs> So I can shed some layers. <laughs> Just dropped Snowy off on about 1.6 miles in. I'm gonna finish up this run solo. Also shed uh, the hoodie that I had underneath this jacket because it is a lot warmer than the first run this morning. And it feels good. So it feels really nice. But Let's get the rest of these miles done. 5.23 in 50, 37, 941 pace. Somehow my fastest one so far, I don't understand. <laughs> totally forgot to vlog this, but halfway done. So excited. Brett made me a wrap for lunch. It was um, eggs and turkey bacon and spinach on a, and a tomato wrap, which was delicious. Um, and I have just been
taking the massage gun to my calves. I'm starting to feel the stiffness, so I'm trying to not be stiff. All I want to do is lay down, but I know that's probably not the best move. I'm going to keep doing the massage gun and try to, you know, keep my body somewhat in motion while also resting it. So that's an interesting dynamic that I have to manage, but you know, here we are. I have like an hour and 45 minutes before my next run. So I'm just going to try to relax as much as possible. Uh, four o'clock will be my last run in the daylight. So gonna try to enjoy it as much as possible. <laughs> All right, it is 3.53, so just about to go out on leg number four of the Yeti. Feeling really tired. I actually ended up falling asleep for a little bit um, <laughs> this afternoon, um, so that was nice. And um, But my, my ankle, my left ankle is feeling a little sore. So we'll kind of just see how the run feels, um, but this will be my last daylight run. <laughs> so I'm going to enjoy it um, and kind of shift my mind uh, into night mode. I'm thinking I need to drink some caffeine <laughs> when I get back um, and, you know, just keep my body from stiffening up because it'll probably get easier and easier to stiffen now that I'm into the second half of the Yeti. Um, so let's go run another 5.2 miles. Riley from the future. As you can see, I'm right in the middle of editing my Yeti vlog and I'm coming to the realization that I have lost footage, which is so unfortunate because I was really enjoying how this video was coming out. Everything from after I ran my fourth leg is gone, except for some very few GoPro clips from my last leg. So I unfortunately can't physically show you my experience of the last two legs, but I thought I'd come on here, don my Yeti Ultra shirt, and talk you through the rest of my experience. I'm really bummed I can't show you the actual vlog footage because I vlogged the entire time and I don't know what happened, but uh, at some point between me taking my footage off of my phone and putting it onto the computer, uh, it got deleted somehow. So I'm thankful I have at least four legs of footage to show you guys, uh, but the last two are, are gone to the video gods. So hopefully this is just as good um, or the next best thing, I should say. Okay, so leg number four was actually one of the more challenging of the six runs that I went on. And I think that was because I had over fueled myself. Um, I was so nervous about under fueling um, that I ate more than I usually do uh, when I run. And so when I went out on leg number four, I felt very full. <laughs> I like really felt like kind of queasy because I had a full stomach. After I got back, I didn't eat anything except for like very small snack type things. Um, because I was just so like I didn't want to still feel full going out on my next run. I think the thing I was most nervous about when going into these later uh, legs of the challenge was that I was gonna fall asleep and then completely miss everything. Um, so I really want I really try to stay awake. I did rest a lot, um, but I really didn't want to fall asleep because um, I wasn't convinced that I was going to wake myself back up. I got up uh, for my fifth leg, which happened at 8 p.m., ran it successfully. This was my first uh, nighttime run since the first leg. I was like not super excited about running in the dark, 
Um, it just isn't the same <laughs> as running in daylight when you can like see things. Um, I, I get really concerned about my safety when I'm out by myself in the dark. Um, so I really tried to stay around um, the house as much as I could. Um, I did a lot of loops around the neighborhood. <laughs> Luckily at 8 p.m. people were still really kind of out and about. Houses were lit up. Um, people were walking their dogs. Um, so I wasn't completely alone at 8 p.m. which felt good <laughs> but I still like I'm not a fan of running in the dark. It's not my favorite thing in the world um, but I got through it and I would say at this point fatigue had really kind of set in not necessarily with my legs or anything like that. I mean my legs were sore like I had run <laughs> a lot of miles by then um, but I think it was more I was tired and I wanted to go to bed. Um, that was really more my problem. I feel like if anything that like really bothers me uh, if I do not get a, enough rest or if I feel tired, I, I don't feel good. <laughs> I just want to sleep and that's all I can think about is like I just want to go to sleep. And so at this point, um, fatigue had 100% set in and I was just ready to go to bed. <laughs> um, I didn't really have any problem with like running five more miles, like the concept of running five more miles, but I wasn't looking forward to waiting until midnight to run my last 5.2 miles. So I think at this point it was really like a mental game for me. Um, I was feeling really tired. I just wanted to sleep, but I had to keep myself awake. Cause like I said, uh, I uh, didn't trust myself to wake back up if I did fall asleep. And then my last run happened at midnight. At this point, Brett had gone to bed. I just wanted to go to bed. The world was asleep outside going out into the dark at midnight just was not appealing to me whatsoever. Um, and so in order to get myself to enjoy the last run and be in more of a celebratory mood because I was coming to an end of a really difficult challenge, um, I did capture some GoPro footage of myself counting down the miles in the dark. So here it is. One mile down, 4.2 to go. Two miles in, 3.2 to go. Just a little more than a 5K. Let's do it. Three miles in, 2.2 to go. Getting there. Four miles, 1.2 to go. So close to being done. Oh, I can't wait. It felt so cool to be wrapping up this challenge after working towards it all day long um, and really focusing on it. And I did, my last leg was 5.21 miles um, and I did it in 57.08. I wrapped up around one o'clock, right before one o'clock in the morning. And it was weird to wrap it up all by myself <laughs> when all I wanted to do was like celebrate and like really take in my accomplishment. Um, and everybody was asleep. So I was just like kind of cheering for myself on my own. Um, I took this really great picture of myself with my completed whiteboard and then I took a shower and I went to bed. The funny thing about the day that I did this race was actually the day before daylight savings where we would lose an hour um, and so by the time I had showered and gotten myself into bed and kind of like settled down after the run uh, it was almost 2 a.m. which would have then turned into 3 a.m. <laughs> so I lost an hour on top of everything else. Um, I, I think I looked at the clock when I was falling asleep and I was like 1.53 a.m. And I was like, wow, it's about to be 3 a.m. right now. <laughs> uh, I've been up for a really long time. Here is the medal that I earned by doing this challenge. It's a wooden medal, which is really cool. Uh, and it has the Yeti Ultra 24 hour challenge uh, logo on it, which is like the most intense logo ever. There's a cat holding a dagger and uh, There's lightning bolts coming out of this mountain, which is also an umbrella <laughs> It's very intense um, And it's also on my shirt um, So I feel really cool wearing this shirt <laughs> Overall, the Yeti was a really incredible experience. I wish I had the footage again to show you guys uh, the end of the experience, but I'm really glad that I took it on. If I were to give some pieces of advice for anybody who would be interested in running a challenge like this, I have a couple of suggestions. It was really hard for me to like find some advice <laughs> on this challenge. I really had to like kind of scour uh, the internet for it. 
So I wanted to kind of share what I think would be good tips and tricks to actually accomplishing this uh, challenge. Um, first thing would be uh, if you can make sure that uh, this challenge on the day that you're doing it is as much as possible the only thing that you're focusing on that day. I know that's not super realistic for a lot of people. People have families to take care of, people have jobs, but you really need to kind of throw your whole self into this challenge in order to accomplish it, I think. At least like from me, like from my perspective, I'm not an ultra marathoner. <laughs> this is like the first time I had tried anything like this. Um, and I really didn't know what to expect, but uh, I, I really made sure to like, made sure I had groceries on hand so I wasn't like wondering what to eat or having to go out to get food. Um, making sure that everything is like ready the night before. Like I showed you guys, I had like all of my clothes set aside and all my shoes set aside. And like, I had a game plan in my mind of like when I was gonna go on my runs and what I was gonna wear for each thing. And like, so I just like, making it so that's the only thing that you're focused on. Um, not making plans with anybody else, not having obligations. Um, I know that's not easy for everybody. So that's just like from my perspective, somebody who can make that choice, uh, as much as you can, uh, just kind of focus on the challenge for the day that you're doing it. Second piece of advice I think is ignoring your brain. <laughs> <laughs> and just solely listening to your body. Um, I feel like taking on a challenge like this can be really overwhelming. Uh, it's something that takes the whole day um, and it's a really kind of daunting task if you think about it too hard. Um, so what I tried to do is I just shut the brain off as much as I could and focus on what my body needed in order to get ready for the next 5.2 mile run. When I was hungry, I ate. When I was sleepy, I tried except for the last two um, legs, I really tried to, you know, just kind of rest. I had, took like little naps throughout the day. I'm not one to nap. I just kind of fell asleep while I was watching TV because I was tired. <laughs> um, but you know, that's what I needed. If I needed to stretch, I stretched. If I rolled out, paid attention to like the little things in my body that were feeling a little off. I think the biggest thing for me in turning my brain off was like, I did not want to go out on a lot of those runs. When it was like 15 minutes to the next run or 30 minutes to the next run, I got my butt up, I put my clothes on, got myself ready, and I just started running. <laughs> like just get out there and just start running. Uh, Cause once you start, you just like, you'll want to complete that leg. You need to operate like a robot in a lot of ways. Just ignore the brain, listen to the body, and just go run your miles and then you'll come back and then you'll do it again. A third piece of advice, um, and I think this is the biggest piece of advice I would give for a challenge like this is tell people that you're doing it. One of the biggest things that helped me in this challenge was hearing like words of encouragement uh, via text, um, on Instagram. Um, I was updating with each leg of the challenge on Instagram and I was getting comments from folks in the running community and my followers and uh, people were just like cheering me on and knowing that I had people who were uh, dialed in and encouraging me really helped me get through the harder moments during my runs. Um, I would think of like a comment that somebody would leave me um, on my previous post uh, that day and it would just kind of like push me through. I know it's tempting to not share goals that are scary um, because you don't want to fail <laughs> and and look like oh I just failed at something and I failed so publicly. I think you got to kind of squash that fear a little bit because the benefits of sharing what you're doing really outweigh the negatives. Um, and I think if I didn't share what I was doing with folks and I didn't have those words of encouragement and didn't know that people were rooting for me, uh, that would have mentally made this so much more challenging and who knows if I would have accomplished the challenge. So that would be my third piece of advice and I think it's definitely the most important. People really fuel you when you do hard things. Put yourself out there share what you're doing and people will cheer you on. But yeah, so that was my Yeti Ultra Challenge. I want to put my my medal on. Since I'm wearing my finisher. Woo woo woo. You can't really see it in the camera, but just know that I'm wearing it, okay? <laughs> Would I do something like this again? 
probably. <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing for me is it was really hard to go out alone, especially when I was tired. Like I kind of wish if I were to do this again, I would want to do it with somebody else. Um, either virtually or in person. Um, just knowing that I, if, if I knew I had like a buddy doing the experience with me, um, I feel like I would have, it would have been so much more fun. Um, it does get lonely when you're just out doing something by yourself <laughs> and for yourself, um, just to see if you can do it. Um, but something that long and that challenging is always so much more fun when you can do it with somebody else. So if anybody wants to do the Yeti with me again in the future, let me know, we can totally do it. But yeah, this was a really, really challenging, but a really cool experience as a runner. Um, and if you're looking to challenge yourself, I would say try it out. It's definitely a lot of fun. Um, and I had a really great time doing it. I'm still so mad that I don't have the rest of the footage to share with you guys, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you did, please leave a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.